Peace, brothers and sisters. This is Hua Qi. Thank God, it is time again for our Bible reading. Let's continue to read Genesis chapter thirty-three. Today we will start from verse four. But Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. This reunion scene was beyond Jacob's imagination. He thought Esau came to take his life with the four hundred men, because of this fear, he wrestled with God in Jabbok's ford. So he experienced penal, which means I saw God face to face. This is the work God had to do to him, when his strongest part was touched by God, he became limping before God. After God fulfilled His will for Jacob, He made the reunion scene very touching. Two brothers hugged, embraced each other, kissed, and wept. God is a peacemaker. All of us, God's children, need to be peacemakers too. So we are suitable to be ambassadors for Christ, bringing the gospel that God wants to be reconciled with men to those in need. After Esau and Jacob reconciled, verse five, and when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the women and the children, he said, "Who are these with you?" Twenty years ago, when Jacob left home, he was alone. Twenty years later, when he returned, he was not alone. Esau saw the group of people behind Jacob. He asked, "Who are these with you?" Jacob said, "The children, whom God has graciously given your servant." Of course, Jacob's children had never seen their uncle Esau before. Thus, Jacob introduced them. He said, "The children, whom God has graciously given your servant." He had been calling himself servant before Esau. He stood in a humble position. As for the children. Jacob knew they were from God. Twenty years in Padam Aran, God had protected him. Under God's authority, Jacob had four wives and concubines, eleven sons, and at least one daughter, Dinah. Every one of these was a blessing from God. Verse six. Then the servants drew near, they and the children, and bowed down. Two servants had four children. Jacob must introduce them to Esau one by one. Verse seven. Leah likewise and her children drew near and bowed down. Leah bore six sons and a daughter Dinah for Jacob. And last, Joseph and Rachel drew near and they bowed down. Joseph was the only one mentioned by name among Jacob's children. The order. He was introduced was different as well. Others were introduced as servants and their children, Leah and her children, and last it was Joseph and Rachel. Here, Bible put Joseph in a special position. This indicated that in the last chap, in the lat latter chapters, the main character was changed slowly from Jacob to Joseph. This part set the stage for later. We said this once before that the stories of Jacob and Joseph overlapped. After Peniel, we see God's hand had been taking things away from Jacob. Jacob was humbled again and again. While he was humbled, Joseph was on the rise. At the end, he became the advisor for Pharaoh. He managed the kingdom for him. He also became the savior for the family of Israel. This was recorded in the Bible with the intention to show that a man needed to be humbled and emptied first. Then God could raise him up step by step. We see from Jacob's life that God was molding him, and from Joseph we see that he was put in charge for God. These are the two sides of one experience. Philippians 
2, verse 5 to 9, talked about Jesus Christ's experience, which was the same as Joseph's. Jesus Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equally equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. A humbling process is also a process of promotion. Through our humbling process and emptying ourselves, God took away our old selves and our nature selves. What he took away, he replaced it with himself. Through the process of humbling, the old self is taken away. Through the process of being filled, this person has Christ in him. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7, Paul said, But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So we do not lose and, and so we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light moment, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. Jacob finished to introduce his children to Esau, verse 8. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company that I met? In chapter 32, Jacob was in great fear and distress. He prepared nine groups of gifts to go before him, which met Esau first. His intention was to let Esau knew he was very rich. He had no intention to take the inheritance from Esau. He was willing to give Esau many gifts, which included nine groups. Verse 8, Esau said, What do you mean by all this company that I met? Jacob answered, To find favor in the sight of my Lord. In other words, Jacob acknowledged before Esau that he was the one in the wrong. Back then, he cheated his father's blessing. He was willing to pay him back. Through these gifts, he wanted to find favor in the sight of Esau. Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24. So if you are offering your gift at the altar and uh, there, remember that your brother has something against you. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. God wants his children to have a clear conscience before men. When you are worshiping or offering, if you thought about something against you, you need to stop all your services and giving before altar. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Jacob wanted to be reconciled to Esau through these gifts. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob had been calling Esau, my lord. He put himself in the position of a servant. Esau called Jacob brother. This was a beautiful appellation. The brother's reunion went very well was because of Jacob's gift and his self-addressed humble position on one hand, on the other, God's authority. From Esau, we see no grudge against Jacob. He said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Esau at this time also became a large family. Therefore, he could welcome Jacob with 400 men. He had moved to Seir, south of Dead Sea. Back then, when both brothers were in their father Isaac's house, they had a lot of arguments. After 20 years, both of them left home. Jacob went north to Padamaran. Esau went south to Seir. One was still a shepherd, the other a hunter. With God's blessings, both of them were very rich. Thus Esau said to Jacob, 
I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Back then, when Jacob longed for the birthright of firstborn and Isaac's blessings, he might wanted material stuff, the double portion. After twenty years, he found that God's blessings were so abundant he needed no more. He must have learned that the true blessings are not material stuff, nor worldly stuff, but spiritual stuff and heavenly stuff. Because of this knowledge, he was able to give generously to his brother Esau many gifts. Though Esau said politely, "I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself." Verse ten. Jacob said, "No, please. If I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand." Jacob still took a humble position because he knew he did wrong his brother. He was willing to pay him back. Jacob said, "If I have found favor in your sight, then accept my present from my hand, for I have seen your face, which is like seeing the face of God, and you have accepted me." This showed the transformation of Jacob. Now he saw the face of his brother, which was like seeing the face of God. I believe these were not his flattery words. These were the words from his heart. The night before he saw the face of God, he wrestled with God face to face for a whole night. During the process, he saw his own corruption. What he thought was good and was proud of were all corruptions and worthless before God. When we come face to face with God, on one hand we see ourselves; on the other, God's unending grace. From the face of God, he saw his own sins, unrighteousness, and debts. By God's arrangement, he met his brother face to face under this circumstance. Sure enough, it was like he saw the face of God. Thus, he truly wanted to pay the price. In Peniel, he met God face to face. Yet his life was spared. Now he met his brother Esau face to face. Yet Esau accepted him. For this, Jacob was very thankful. Verse eleven, please accept my blessing that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. The Chinese Union Version used "gift" in verse eleven. King James used "blessings" instead. These gifts were blessings from God. I am only the channel of blessing. The blessing comes to you through me because God had dealt graciously with me, and I have enough. This is also the best way for every Christian to bless others. We first experience God's grace and enjoy God's blessing. We become the channel of blessing. Through us, God's blessings flow to others. Jacob urged him, and he took it. Chapter thirty-three, verse four to eleven, recorded the twin brothers' story of reconciliation. Twenty years ago, Jacob off- offended his brother. His brother wanted to kill him. The two parted their ways. Twenty years later, Jacob was molded and changed in God's hands. He already had some experiences with God. By God's arrangement, the brothers met. It was very harmonious and sweet. How great is this, dear brothers and sisters? In your Christian walk so far, do you have anything that you owed apology to other saints? After many years, these sins that had not been dealt with are still occupying your heart. It is time to deal with them. God is a peacemaker. We should be willing to humble ourselves before God and see His face. We should be willing to pay for the debts. All the sins in the past will then become, be changed into blessings today. Let's pray, Lord, help me to examine my heart to see if there are anything that offended others and you. Please give me grace so I could properly deal with these debts. Let me have a clear conscience before God and man. Bless my life in Jesus' name. Amen.